I just watched the third and final Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton presidential debate. <sighs> that was fun, huh? There were several questions that Chris Wallace asked Trump in this debate. And by the way, Chris Wallace did a fantastic job moderating this debate. All of my Fox News related queasiness aside, uh, I think it should be noted that Chris Wallace was not working for Fox News tonight. Chris Wallace was working for the Commission on Presidential Debates, and I think he did a damn good job as... Uh, the moderator of this debate. I think he was the best moderator of any of the debates that we've seen this year, any of the other presidential debates or the vice presidential debate. I think Chris Wallace killed it and was an awesome moderator. And one of the questions that he asked Trump, actually, he began this question by pointing out that some of the things that Trump had said in a response to this subject in a previous debate were false. He said, you said some things during your response about Aleppo in the previous debate that were untrue, sir. And instead of acknowledging that he had been wrong about something or that maybe he had mischaracterized something or maybe just through no fault of his own, his answer had not been entirely accurate, Trump breezed right by Wallace's bringing up of his factual inaccuracies. And he just went right into his answer about how Aleppo is all Hillary Clinton's fault and why didn't she do anything about it? And this is all a mess and it's all Barack Obama's fault and it's all Hillary Clinton's fault and it's not going to get any better unless you elect Donald Trump and blah, blah, blah. But there he stood denying reality, just, just, just driving right by when he's challenged on facts, when he's pointed out instances where he's lied, where he's been wrong, where he has mischaracterized something that Secretary Clinton said, where he's gone off on an irrelevant tangent. Um, he just breezes right by because he knows his base will stay with him no matter what. What really boggles my mind is that he seems to think his base is all he needs. He seems to think if he just says that refugees from Syria are a Trojan horse and that we should be fearing and vilifying refugees and keeping people fleeing oppression and death out of our country, that, that somehow that's going to win him more votes. I'll just keep vilifying refugees. Never mind that there are a thousand easier ways for a terrorist to sneak into this country. And the only reason that you would ever vilify refugees like Donald Trump has consistently done and did again during this debate is because you are either a racist piece of shit yourself or you are trying to fire up the racist pieces of shit who you hope are going to vote for you on election day. It is absolutely disgraceful that he would continue to do that. Uh, he brought out the old partial birth abortion scare tactics. Oh, they could rip a baby out of the mother's womb the day before the due date, and that would be legal, and Hillary Clinton loves that, right? This is the kind of shit that I heard when I was in high school, when I was in middle school, during my young Republican phase. This is the kind of shit that people would say when they called into the Rush Limbaugh show. This is the kind of shit that people would write in self-published paperback books that were sold on spinner racks and tr at truck stops in the 1980s and 90s. The kind of shit that you would read in underground newsletters that were printed on ditto machines in somebody's basement that would you would read in smeary purple print that would be passed out from hand to hand. The kind of delusional right-wing conspiracist rants that were coming out of Donald Trump's mouth. He's not a, a, a presidential candidate in the year 2016. He's a right-wing underground conspiracy theorist from 1996. If you listen to the words that are coming out of his mouth, if you listen to the arguments that he's making, there were two telling moments during this debate uh, that I want to end on. The first was actually the final segment of the debate where Chris Wallace gave them both an opportunity to give sort of a closing statement and Hillary Clinton's closing statement basically boiled down to this. I've been doing this my entire professional life. I have tried to make life better for people. I've tried to serve people. I want to help you. I need your help. And if you give me the opportunity to be the president, I will do the best I can for you. Now, whether you like Hillary Clinton or not, whether you trust Hillary Clinton or not, whether Hillary Clinton is the person you wanted to be on that stage as the Democratic nominee or not, the fact remains her message was positive. It was outreaching. It was her saying, I want to help you and I need you. And if you let me be your president, I will do the best I can for you. That was her message. That was her closing statement in this debate. Donald Trump's closing statement, on the other hand, was Hillary's crooked. You can't trust her. The entire world is going to shit. Everything is falling apart and you're all doomed unless you vote for me. It was basically a very shortened version of his 
just delusional, uh, megalomaniacal, apocalyptic convention acceptance speech. Everything is terrible. The world is coming to an end. The only person who can possibly save you is me, so you should vote for me or else. That's the first moment that I think is quite telling in this debate and kind of speaks for the entire campaign to this point. The other moment was a little bit before that, and it's the moment that I think everybody's going to be talking about for the next few days, and it's the moment where Trump may have actually lost some of the people that were still with him. And that is when Chris Wallace gave Donald Trump an opportunity to put his most volatile, potentially violent followers at ease, to walk back some of his extremely reckless and inflammatory rhetoric about the election being stolen, about not accepting the result of the election, and what did Donald Trump say? He said, well, I'll see on the night. And he actually kind of played it as like a joke. He said, I'm going to keep you in suspense. We'll see whether I accept the result of the election or not. We'll just wait till election night. He had the chance to disavow his dangerous, reckless, inflammatory rhetoric that undermines confidence in our democracy and spins all of these, these ridiculous conspiracist paranoid fantasies about elections being stolen and Democrats registering dead people to vote for them and mass voter fraud that can alter the outcome of an election. Just complete fairy tales, right-wing paranoid fairy tales that people have been peddling for 60 years, that people have been scaring each other with since the, the heyday of the John Birch Society. And Donald Trump had a chance to repudiate all of that and do something responsible and grown up for once in his fucking life. And what did he do? He said, nah, I mean, we'll just have to see. It's irresponsible. It is exactly what Hillary was describing in the debate when she said that Trump refuses to accept defeat. He refuses to accept uh, denial of what he wants. He refuses to accept that he is anything other than a winner and the greatest person at everything that he does. He's the best at everything. He's that, that kid that I'm sure all of you knew in school who wasn't really that good at anything, but tried to make up for it by being the most egotistical, boastful jerk that you had ever seen. Donald Trump is that puffed up eighth grader who sucks at everything, but makes sure that everybody knows that he thinks he's great at everything. And I guess maybe if he pushes that narrative hard enough, and if he lets us see how strongly he believes it, maybe the rest of us will start to believe it too. Well, I don't think it's going to work based on the results of tonight's debate, based on all the polling, based on everything. On election night 2016, November 8th, I get the feeling, and I sure hope that this is true, that America will tell Donald Trump that one thing that he cannot stand to hear the voting public of the United States is going to say to Donald Trump, no. And whether he likes it or not, he's going to have to accept it.